He cut a figure different from the cocksure political scientist, not analyst as he's known to be Labour, who coined the now ingrained phrase, tyranny of numbers. So much so that he even took a Bible with him when he appeared before the Public Accounts Committee of the National Assembly on Tuesday to explain a 12 million shilling overpayment from the National Youth Service Funds. He sought to impress on the legislators, given some of what he was about to testify to, they would have to take on faith as it was communicated not in writing but orally. For example, that it was former Cabinet Secretary Anwai Guru who personally engaged the services of his think tank, the Consulting House, in restructuring the NYS and later told him it is not your job to fight corruption when he raised concern that there was something fishy going on. Uh, my uh, consultants told me that there's something fishy going on here. There is money that is being lost in this particular situation and I request that we be allowed to move in. And, and, and deal with this situation. Uh, but we were told categorically that your job at NYS is not to fight corruption. So at that particular point, yeah, it was put categorically to us at Rambi House. At that point I said, look, and my consultants would come occasionally, and they would tell me that yes, something- Mr. Chairman, was that in writing or it was verbal? I, I swore by my mother's Bible. It was, it was verbal. It was verbal, okay. Yeah. By the four letters I have them. Honorable. Correction, the Bible is the Bible, not your mother's Bible. But <laughs> <laughs> Who is this person who told you that your job is not to fight corruption? And most importantly, who in government called you to tell you, Professor Nguni, based on your previous track record, we have a job here for you, come and do it? The, the, the person is known and she has a name, and I will tell you who it was. It was the Honorable Minister for Devolution, Anne Waigoro. She's the one who placed a call to me on the 3rd uh, or, or, or something. It was sometime in February, I can't remember exactly, uh, 2014. Uh, when we were told that our job is not to fight corruption also, that was said in a meeting uh, several times. But as I'm saying, it is verbal. But my biggest fear, uh, Mr. Chair, is that the cartels we disbanded at NYS have begun to reconstitute themselves. The people we moved in there and we, uh, we, we asked that they be transferred into the ministries, a good number of them, I'm told. I, when the, minister, when uh, the PS comes in, you would want to ask her that. They have all regrouped. And we seem to be going back to the model of the 1960s, 1964. And my biggest fear on that, Honorable Chair, in the interest of the public, is that if those cartels regroup, they will make 791 look like a Sunday school picnic or make it look like a Sunday school offering. And it is these corrupting forces, Nguni told the MPs, he believes, that sought to rope him in as an accomplice by maliciously sneaking the 11.875 million, to be exact, into his company's account. My thinking is actually that there is a sense in which this was done by the cartels within um, NYS itself. And this is not, these are not the suppliers, but it's the people who are embedded inside. And I'm saying so because at NYS, corruption does not fight back. Corruption corrupts back. And uh, uh, my hunch is that they did this with the intention that I will keep the money. Uh, but uh, my conscience will not allow me to do so. Uh, because uh, this is contaminated money. For Capital TV, I'm Olive Barrows.